Hello, everybody. Welcome to Echo Underground. I'm Shanique. This is Mike. And on this podcast, we talk about music, TV shows, and mu- and movies, <laughs> and any other interesting topics. Yes, I did almost mess up the intro. This is, what, the second time of 2018? It's going to keep happening. But, <laughs> so, on today's episode, we're going to talk about the new album by g Beautiful and Damned. Now, we kind of late. This album came out, like, in December, but we counted towards 2018 because it missed most of 2017 anyway. So, we're just going to count it towards that. Um, I think it even missed the Grammy deadline, too. So, this album's not even in consideration. So, yeah. In my opinion, it's a 2018 album. Um, but we want... Let us know what you guys think by tweeting us at Echo U Podcast or leaving comments on our Facebook, YouTube, or iTunes or any other podcasting apps at Echo Underground Podcast. And I'm going to get into it. So what I thought about this album. This is a really good album. I'm going to give this a solid A. A plus. There wasn't, there was like two songs. I was like, bruh, really? But most of it, I thought was really good. I, the beat, whoever produced the beats on this album really good Jeezy had some really good bars he had maybe a couple songs where I'm like yo those bars are weak but they were club banger songs so I I let it pass you know there was like maybe two or three and then the other ones where they could be playing in the club he actually had meaning this was a 20 song album right I loved oh, every song even the ones where I was like you know it's kind of repetitive but I still fuck with it if it came on I wouldn't be like nah turn that shit off so yeah I thought Jeezy did really good and you guys should definitely check it out. What do you think of this album, Michael? I think this album was also a solid A. Because I went into this album thinking I was going to like it because of what I've heard on the radio. If I hit it one time. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, obviously that song was going to show up. It was, you know, it's impossible for it not to. But then, it, I mean, it, it didn't ruin the album for me, even though like that's, that was kind of my bar that I had set. Because I was like, all right, maybe the rest of the album going to sound like this. I was pleasantly surprised. I actually gave this, this is actually a solid day for me too because you know almost all the songs had like Shanice said a really good beat. I am um, the features were also pretty good and that's it's cool to see E40 um on one of these songs. A lot of the female voices were really dope. Um they added a lot to um you know G Easy and the, um his the song that he was pulling off and I just thought they were all pretty good. I, I was just really surprised to see how lyrical he was um through a lot through a lot of these songs to be honest. Yeah. Because um, especially since we saw him in concert we really um we really just banked on you know at least, oh, not we i'll speak for myself i really just banked on like a good sound coming out and not necessarily like an actual like you know bar or like a storytelling type of thing going on and this sort of sh- put that all in check and i was like oh all right excuse me here's your <laughs> exactly so all right let's get into our top threes and i do have an honorable mention do you have one michael do you? I said no. I just have my three. Oh, I didn't hear you. Like, no sound came out just now. Oh, yeah. And pre-warning, there might be some issues because we are recording over Skype and Skype likes to play games. So, my number three. It kind of changed as I, like, went through the album. But my number three is actually Charles Brown, which is, like, the 15th song on the album, featuring E-40 and JN. Now... I'm going to tell you why I really enjoyed it. One, the way it opened was really cool. Um, Jay actually sounded a little bit like Drake throughout the entire... <laughs> yeah, I can say that too. I was like, ah, it's not like Drake. And I like that they kind of used the same quote as um, from Kanye's Heard Me Say, which is one of my favorite Kanye songs. So I thought that was really cool. E-40's verse was really cool. I thought his voice wouldn't work, but it actually surprisingly worked with the beat. And the tone of the song, so I really love it. Because if anyone ever heard of E-40 rapping, his voice is, like, very distinctive. You can't mistake that for anyone. Um, Another thing is, G-40's lyrics was really G-40. Lord, I <laughs> combined their names. <laughs> I'm about G- to say, hold on, what? <laughs> G-Eazy lyrics were really good. And his bar it's not the best bars on the album. But it's it's really, like on the better half so yeah definitely um charles brown what do you think of charles brown unless it's in your top three then we can wait um no it's not in my top three but i do agree that it's worthy of being a top three for somebody because 
Um, I was, like I said, uh, I just spoke about E-40 right when you chose the song where E-40 was in. <laughs> and I was like, oh, how convenient. But yeah, I thought E-40 sounded good. And E-40, yes, so surely does sound unique. Like, I, I don't know if he sounds like that off of um his music or if he sounds like that every day, like in the, you know, restaurants ordering his food. Like, that hey, I want a hot dog with some sausage and some ketchup. I'm like, you know, he he's, he he had this weird like talk rapping type kind of thing that like, kind of works for him. Man, new. And right, it's, it's it's really unique for E40. And I thought Tom Charles Brown was actually a really good song. Um, one, and I, I know you said it's not one like the most lyrical for g Easy, but I'm like, you know. No, I said the I lyrics are really good. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I must I must have misheard you. But yeah, I thought this was a really good one. Um, I I really like Charles Brown. I think I'm really I was really hit for E40 to be honest. At the end of the day. But I, but I feel like that was a good thing though, because it was a pleasant surprise. I just did not um, expect to see E40 here. Like, um, you know, GEZ generally works with a lot of the females, and I was expecting that. But E40, I was like, hey, that's 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 a name I haven't heard in a while since um, yep. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of cool to see. You. Yeah. All right. So what's your number three? Um, uh, my number three is actually going to go to the title song and the opening song. Two things that you all know I hate when the albums do wrong the beautiful and the damned no idea who zoe nash is but i think she did a very good job this has a very unique sound to it um for for g easy but i feel like it it, it works well for what he's done before and what the rest of his album looks like it sets a good pace for the rest of the album it's it's very it's, it's very own sound it's a lot more um the tempo isn't up there with all the rest of the songs, but it's fine though, because it's a good intro for him. And I feel like GEZ handles all kind of tempos differently, like you know, from club bangers to to the more somber to the more like hardcore kind of rap. And it's like, okay, fine, you you've hit all the categories there. The first song on the album, first song on my on my list here for top three. Okay, and cool. And funny note about that is it used to be in my top three, and then as the album kept going, I was like, nah, I like other songs better than that. But one, I like how you called her Zoe and her name is Zoe. See, Michael knows her so much that he can just give her nicknames, apparently. I literally just told you I have no idea. The first thing I said about this review of this song was like, I don't know who she is, but she sounded good. Hey, at least say her name correctly, bro. Hey, some people, some people spell Zoe Z-O-E, okay? She's not, she wouldn't be the only one. The only other time I see the word Zoe is Gorilla Zoe. And I don't, I don't know if anybody knows who that is. Anymore. Only Zoe I know is from Zoe 101, and that shit had a Y in it. But anyway, moving on, let me talk about the song. God. No, I'm playing. <laughs> um, I uh, you anyway, so I loved her voice. I've been trying to shoot both of it anyway, guys. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. I love her voice. I love the beat. Um, GEZ Flow was really good. Um. I like the part where she's like, she kept saying like, oh, ever seen an angel with thorn- horns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and basically the song's like, yo, everyone makes mistakes. Like, he's trying to do, he's trying to be a better person, but he's going to fall short. That's literally the whole point of that song. And I really liked it. Even though like, like no offense, Jeezy, like the cover of your album made it seem like this whole dramatic thing. Like he had blood on his shirt and everything. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? And then his album's nothing like that picture, but it's a really good picture. It I didn't I just don't think it fits the tone of the album. But I was like, all right, cool, whatever. But yeah, um, very good start of the album. I was, I knew, well, I shouldn't say I knew because we've been disappointed before. But this was a very good start, and I wasn't disappointed with the rest of it. So my number two is um. Oh, no less. Ah, very good one. Featuring S.G. Lewis and Lewis Martyrs. I think that's how you say that guy's name. I couldn't tell which was which on the track, though. But whatever. Um, First of all, Jeezy Flow was so chill on this. I was like, man, such a smooth, like, rapping on this beat. And it was really good. Um, And this is another song where he's, like, he's trying to do the right thing and all that stuff and he's like it's easier to sell a dream than to keep it real which is probably the truest statement (laughs) that you'll possibly find Mm -hmm. Um, the features were really good and they enhanced the song but you can still tell it's Jeezy record because he shined really like he didn't get overpowered by his features and I can say that about anyone even though he had like you know E-40 um he had Cardi well I think Cardi B did better on him on that song 
but we're gonna get there. But yeah, No Less was a was my number one, and then there's one song after that, so I gave Michael a hint of what my number one is. It's one of the very, very late ones um, that, in my opinion, was better. But for some reason, for me, the second half of the album, his bars went up. Like, he actually started, like, really, really talking about something. He was in the first half, but I don't know. For me, in the second half, he, like, really amped it up. But yeah, what do you think of No Less? Unless it's in your top. No, it's not, but I did think it was cool, too. Um, it was a very good... Where it was in the album, I feel like um the entire album was good. So, it's like, you know, I feel like it just fits... Everything fits where it was. But um, when it came to No Less, everything was fine there, too. I was really, at this point, already convinced that g Easy does a good job with all his stuff. So, in the last half, I really just had my eyes on the um the features at this point. And I agree with everything you said about the song. Because I don't, I don't want to go ahead and repeat everything you said. But everything about it was okay for me. Worthy of also being a good number two. Also a good contender for my number, my top three spots. I think I found at one point my number three spot, but then I ended up putting the, um, the title song over it. But, um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I think everything, um, went with, um, in, in good conjunction with, with each other. Good synergy between all three of them. And I, I can see why this would be in someone's top three. A very good pick. All right. Well, thank you. What is your number two? <laughs> I almost don't want to tell you. Because I think I already know so I was in your number one. Okay, go for it. Sober? Sober is not my number one. Ah, okay. Well, Sober, Sober is my number two, though. Okay. My number... All, all, all my songs are in like, the first half of the album, which is pretty good, but like, nothing anything bad about the last half. But like, this is my personal little pick here. But Sober was pretty good. Um, Charlie Puth, he did his thing. You know, g- good sing out of him. You know, GE. I, I, at this point, I already was convinced. You know, GE's can work with everybody from his other albums or whatever. So seeing him work with Charlie was pretty cool too. Um, I don't know. I think the added somberness, to the, the added somberness to the song was pretty good to listen to. It was easy, especially considering that's kind of where the beginning um half of the album kind of sounded like anyway, with like but a dream and um you know maybe like him and I with Halsey. Those 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 those, those kind of songs right there for some reason all in conjunction work well with each other like you know back to back to back so I feel like you know not only was it like you know wise album placement but like it just I, I was it already built enough momentum for me to say hey this is kind of maybe, maybe this is you know this part of the album where like things are kind of like both somber and both like really good hip hop at the same time so yeah that's kind of where I'm at with this one good job Charlie Puth definitely good definitely um much respect for his performance here yeah. Um, even though Sober is not in, like, my top three, um, I love the opening with him, with Charlie Poof. I thought he did really good. Um, and basically the song is about doing stupid shit while you're drunk, but mm-hmm. it's saying, hey, you only live once, so, you know, Michael know a lot about that. Anyway, <laughs> I was waiting for the moment, uh, like, in this podcast where you're like, she's gonna say some kind of shady shit about this song, but I ain't gonna get into it, though. Not gonna get, not gonna indulge her into her trollery not doing it not the day <laughs> cuz he know I'm right anyway uh you know what I'm saying sounds he sounds amazing on the chorus Jeezy verses were really good and overall I I truly do enjoy this song so good choice good choice all right so guess my number 1 mm, your number 1 I it better not be no limit is that your guess cuz the answer is no <laughs> no that was my guess boy yeah, go ahead what would you guess? No limit. That's oh, my guess. No, no, no. Mine is the closing. Easy. Oh no way! That was a good pick. Oh my god, that's us. See, I felt you're right. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna let you talk. Okay, so my number one is Easy featuring Sun Lux, and I love the concept of the song because it's, he's talking to his younger self, and to me, this song was his best bars on the entire album. Um, the beat was really good um basically the song saying yo this game is not easy and he's like he's it's kind of like what everyone wants to do like talk to your younger self be like yo don't do that like this shit gonna happen like um i like the part where he told the story about this girl who broke his heart but then he was like yo fuck that bitch you're gonna be all right <laughs> and all this stuff and i thought his flow was really amazing the beat was really good um the feature great i think it was one of the few male features on this album. He worked with a lot of women on this album. <laughs> and 
perfect way to close an album that's basically about, you know, hey, you're going to make mistakes in your life. And I thought this was a perfect way to do it. So what do you think of Easy? Since I don't think Easy's your number one, because you said your pick was on the first half. No, it was a, for a while, like I was finished the uh, album not too long ago. And it almost almost came into my, it was almost my number one as well. Because it was a very damn good closer. I think the only the biggest closer um that I liked the most of all the albums we've done on this podcast was from NF. I thought his closer was amazing. And I feel like this one damn near, like, you know, gave him a run for the money right there. Because I agree. I do agree that, you know, all his bars had meaning. He definitely sounded good. And the feature played his, played a very good part. You know, check all the boxes that you need for a good closer here. And, you know, because this is the last thing I heard in my mind, it's like the freshest one in my mind. So I'm like, you know, this is a good runner for number one. But see, then I went through the album one more time because I had extra time before the podcast started, even though we're doing it a little early. Shanique decided to call me about 45 minutes early. But no, I, I went through I said one... nine. Well, it's also 930. Anyways, no, we're not, we're not, we're not going to get into that politics on the podcast right now. But um, I went through the album one more time and then I decided to change my mind. But my first run through, Easy was my number one. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, so now I'm going to guess your number one. Since you said it's on the first half. Alright, I think... See, I think it's either between him and I or Legend. I'm going to go for him and I. Nope. <laughs> Neither of them, actually. But you were close. You were damn close. Actually, it's Pray For Me. Ah, that which... was my third choice, but I was like, eh. <laughs> I don't know why I Pray think. For... Pray for me was pretty dope. If, if, um, at first, I could see someone saying it's a little too repetitive because they hear the words. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Talk to the man upstairs. Yeah, I mean, I just he thought it was pretty cool. It's, it's, it's definitely it's, he, he's not like being subtle about what the song's about. It's literally it's about you know praying for me, and you know praying for himself, obviously, because of all the stuff yeah he's doing himself. All the bar is it, it's just him on this um on this song, by the way. Yep. Like, um, I think he's the only one in my top three who does. Yeah, he is. You went one of my top three who does not have a feature. That does not have a feature. And I was like, oh, this is pretty good that I actually figured I came back to the song multiple times. So, yeah, Pray For Me was pretty good. The repetitiveness didn't bother me. If anything, it just got catchy to me. Because there's, like, a known repetitive and then there's catchy. And that, that's this definitely, like, teetered on arm the first time. But ever since then, this I realized, wow, this is the one song I actually want to hear more of. Because his bars are pretty good, meaningful. I actually was telling a story here. It's not, it's not necessarily a club banger. She's not a club banger at all, in my opinion. I guess she probably can, but it's, I don't know, it's whatever. That's, that's another question. But yeah, I thought Pray For Me was cool. That's my number one. It's the one I kept coming back to. And I feel like he did a really damn good job here. Yeah, Pray For Me was very catchy. Um, it had a good beat. A little eerie. Um, there was The only thing I hated... Hey, babe. There's mm-hmm. like an echo. I'm going to edit this video anyway, but there's like an echo sometimes on your end. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay. Um, But yeah, it's gone now. So back to the podcast. Um, Yeah, there was a little bit too much. Eh, he kept doing that a lot in some of his songs and it was irritating me. So I this song did not get picked. I was like, I want you to stop doing that every damn time you say a verse. But the chorus was really, really fun. And I agree. I like Play For Me too. I really did enjoy the song. All right, so let's get into the rest of the songs. Next one is Him and I featuring Halsey. One, uh-huh. she was really good. It reminds me, kind of reminds me of the Me, Myself, and I song he had before. I was going to say the same thing. Yep, I was going to say the same thing. I don't even know if the girl's the same. I think it's a different girl, but it's girl's very similar. Um, I like to... His bars, um, whoever the girl he's in love with, their relationship sounds a little too crazy for me, but hey, different strokes for different folks. That's how I feel about it. Um, he says, what's love without pain and suffering? Depends on who you ask. Uh, um, Ho- Halsey, like, she got to showcase her voice at the end a little bit, and I, I like that as well. I thought his verses were good. It's well produced, well made, and this was a really good collaboration. So what do you think of him and I? I like I said because I caught all the shades of uh, me myself and I, um, which was one of if not his biggest hits. 
I immediately liked it because we saw me, myself, and I in um you know live and in person at um his concert. And by far, that's one of my favorite parts. Um, next to you know Logic, that was there as well. But because like this song took some shades of that song, like you know made something new out of it, I was like, okay, obviously I'm gonna like this song. So I fell right in line. I had zero problem with this song. It's actually one of my catches ones. If I and actually, if I did have an honorable mention, it would be up to this one easy. So yeah, that's kind of where I fall with him and I. Okay, next song, but a dream. So. Mm-hmm. This is when we first hear that little modulated voice of his that he's doing. The little demon voice he's got doing. And the only reason I call it a demon voice is because Eminem did the same thing, but the it was supposed to be like the devil's voice on his song Darling. So that's the only, that's what I compare it to. Um it worked. He had that little distorted voice on the chorus and I like that too. Um very good bars. And his flow was so smooth on this record. I was like, all right, I like this. I like smooth, cheesy flow. So, yeah, definitely. What do you think of Butter Dream? Butter Dream was cool, too. Um, the, as Shani calls it, modulated voice was interesting to me because I was like, at, at first, for some reason, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because I was just like chilling at the time and I, didn't, I wasn't really thinking too hard. I was like, who the hell sounds like this naturally? You know, like, it's got to be a computer voice. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course it is, Michael. Think about it. But yeah, I thought it added to this. I, I thought it was, um, it's, it's not something that has never been done before, but it's pretty cool. Like, you know, it's like Shanique says, Eminem's already done that before, and I'm pretty sure many others have as well, uh, even outside of hip-hop. But uh, I thought the song itself was cool. Outside the voice, I thought the song was cool. I thought um, Easy's bars were pretty dope in this one as well. I had no real problem with it, and it's it a pretty sick beat. A lot of these songs did really good on um, the bass, because I was listening to it um, at one point through a speaker, and then the other point through my headphones, and I'm like, a lot of these songs, they sound really good. Like, just bass, like, I, I'm a sucker for bass, and like, this is a pretty good showcase for that. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. Next song is Legend, which was my honorable mention. It was once my top three, but other songs beat it. Uh, I love the beat, I love the flow. Um, it's definitely like, it could be played in a club, and it's very catchy. And again, I thought his bars were really good on this track, so I was like, "All right, Jeezy, keep doing it, keep doing it." I'm, a, I'm gonna love this album. I was praying he didn't let me down in the second half, and he didn't. So yeah, definitely. What do you think of Legend, Michael? Um, Legend was cool, and it was so cool, in fact, that I was like, "Damn, it's gonna be hard to find a good top three now," because <laughs> I don't think we're even halfway through the album, Legend, actually. And then I was like, um, "I have too many good potential," you know songs for this and i've still got a lot more to go and granted the rest of the album sounds good legend itself was still great where it was as well like i do agree for the session you know put it on her honorable mention here it's really damn good song it's definitely catchy um maybe i just don't know what club sounds sound like anymore but i I, 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 not for me anyway in headphones looks like doing random shit in the day sure that's fine but like the song Awesome. No feature on it. Didn't need one. All he needed was his, you know, bars on the sound, and it went just fine. All right. You know a song he did need a feature for? No Limit, because his bars is weak as fuck on that song. But, um, which is actually... No Limit was the next song, and it's featuring ASAP Rocky, who's only on a chorus, and Cardi B. Um, like I said earlier, I think this was, like, the weakest bars on the entire album, Half the song, actually more than half the song, he's just going, eh, like, eh, fuck with me and get some money, eh, like, and then ev- between, like, one, three or four words of his verse, he's like, eh, and I'm like, you lucky the beat's good, and I like the chorus and your feature, or I would say this song is trash, but it is a hit, and I knew it was gonna be a hit, automatically, just for the chorus alone, I knew it was gonna be a hit, so Ace at Rocker, you did your thing, um, like I said, I thought Cardi B's verse was better than his, um, ASAP was good on the chorus, and shout out to the remix of No Limit with Juicy J, French Montana, and Belly. Honestly, the only person you should add was Juicy J, but no shade to the other two. But no, I thought No Limit was a very good party song, but it's probably not like, at least if we're talking bars for Jeezy, not his best song. That's all I got to say. What do you think of No Limit? Since I think you hate it. I mean, I do hate the song. That's like, like I said, um, top of the podcast here. 
that's kind of my bar for this album before I came into it. But like he's like he, like you've heard me before. I gave it an A because everything around it was fine. I feel like a lot of hip hop albums these days they have like this one song on it that like has to be some sort of maybe like club banger or like radio hit potentially. They bank on it being catchy. And I think that's what um, happened here. Or, and this is just my opinion here. I'm not saying this is like, you know, what's actually happening to the world. I never say anything as fact on this podcast. But I feel like a lot of people came to the song for Cardi, which is understandable. Because honestly, if you do come to the song, you probably are coming to the song for Cardi. Because I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I would rather hear Cardi more than G-Eazy on this song. Because one is... Bars are horrible. I mean, I, 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 I'm ashamed to even call them, call them bars, but I don't, I don't really think... I, I can't get too mad at it because, like, I don't... Considering how good the rest of the album was, not like this guy doesn't have bars. It's just he chose not to because he wanted to make a catchy ass radio banger or whatever it is. And I was like, you know, sure, whatever. I know you can do better, but you wanted to throw that one, that one garbage song in there that you know will get you a lot of money, and it probably did. But and that's and not an excuse though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm not, I'm not using it as an excuse for him, but I feel like that's the um, a pattern I'm seeing now for everybody, because. Maybe that's maybe that's what's taking taking away from me from from an A plus. I'm not gonna say one song can do it for any album here, but I'm saying like you know don't give me good quality for 18 or 19 songs and then have this one song that's just like it gives me a question mark above my head as to why the hell it's even there in the first place. Oh, you know? I got a I got another song on this album that's the same like that too. Yeah, I'm, you probably know what it is, but like. Like, you could be lyrical and have party. Like, Biggie did it all the time. So, I never give, like, artists, like, any slack for that. But, to me, he just let his features do the work. He just, it was, like, kind of like, um, French Montana on Unforgettable with, is it Sway Lee? The guy from Ray Shimmer? Mm-hmm. Where, Ray, Sh- that dude, he did all the work on Unforgettable. French Montana literally just rapped so he can get credit for the song. Because that was not right. his song. Like, you only remember his part. And he didn't even start rapping until, like, a minute in. Now, Jeezy came in a lot earlier. But I would I stayed for the other two more than him. But I know he can do better. I think this song, he just let the features do all the work. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. Out of 20 song album, one song where all your features do the work, hey, I can get past that. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm mad like at the song. Though. Yeah, I'm well, no, I don't like the song. But yeah, go ahead. Hey, but you remember it, though. So, at least it's memorable. It's, it's radio overkill. So that's the reason I remember it. If I turn my radio one, I'm probably gonna hear it. So it's like clearly enough people like it for it to be on the radio. But me, I'm 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 picky about my shit these days. So no. I mean, like, like for me, I don't remember half the shit that comes on the radio unless it like really captures my attention. Cause I'm not into mumble rap. No offense to the mumble rappers. I'm just not into it. Full offense to the mumble rappers. I don't like that shit at all. <laughs> Cause I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Like I'm listening to your producer making a beat versus and um with with you getting in the way, just like making up words. Or at least it sounded like making up words. Oh man, <laughs> King of Mum Rat, Lil Yachty. But um, we're, we're... And, and on top of what, on top of what you just said, like you don't you, know, you don't mind hearing on the radio, mind you, I'm in a car for a lot a lot, so it's like I'll have no choice but to hear these things a lot. So in my head, I'm hearing it probably way more than you are, and it's like it's it's annoying me. It's annoying to me. That's that's probably why I'm I'm like you know the, the salty one here about this song. Cause look look how long I'm bitching about it here. A lot longer than any of the songs we've, we've talked about this, on this album so far. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with low min, low low limits. No, no limit. limit. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, song got me flustered, man. Next song, the plan. Um. Oh, I like this song. This song was a little bit... There was too much going on in this song. I know. It felt like he was trying to go different directions. But it was still catchy. Um, he sta- he, This is another song where he did that eh, eh, between every sentence thing. And I was like, bro, please stop doing that. You're better than that. Um, Like I said, even though he did that, it was still better than most of the shit on the radio. I I still liked... I was, I wouldn't turn this song off. But it's definitely not one of my favorites on the album. But it's still a good song. Very decent song. I just... If he... I don't know. If it was less busy, then I would like it more. What do you think of The Plan? I don't think The Plan was busy to me. But I will say, though, that I was into the song for the chorus. Because that chorus was catchy as shit for some reason. Yeah, Couldn't get it out of my head. And I feel like right here... I don't know if you thought this is on purpose or not. But um, it, it 
paid off pretty good for him. No voice or verses or anything like that, because his verses was like, you know, par for course, but there weren't anything like, you know, to blow my face off or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But when I did come back to the song the second time around, I was like, this is a catchy piece of shit. What the fuck? <laughs> piece so, of yeah. shit. <laughs> pleasantly, pleasantly surprising. All right. Now, this is another song on this album where I thought his bars were weak. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, not only were they weak, there weren't much to them. Most of the song was him saying that's a lot. It was a little bit repetitive, and I felt like he wasted the beat. But, like I said, I would still dance to this. I would still listen to it. And overall, it's not a bad song, but it's not the best song on this album. That's what I think of That's A Lot. What about you? Um, I actually think I like this one a little bit more than you did. Um, Probably. I do I, I, I do agree that it was a little repetitive, because I feel like sometimes people try to bank on it being, like, you know, catchy when it gets repetitive. Because a lot of songs do that these days. You say that the same three words over and over again, and you call it, like, a, you know, song of the year or some bullshit. Um, I'm not saying he wanted this to be song of the year, but I'm definitely saying it wasn't, like, you know, it wasn't, like, Pray For Me, where I, like, you know, it, it was repetitive, but, like, I ended up liking the song the most on the album. Yeah, this one just kind of like missed that bar for me. I feel like maybe someone else with different tastes might end up liking it, and that's fine. But um, another thing I have this with the song is um, after No Limit had hit, and the song after that plus this, it's like the first bunch were definitely good first impressions for me, and then that those three just came back to back to back. I'm not saying they're all bad, but they were all lesser quality. No Limit did not help, but the two after if No I Limit. Hate it, um, <laughs> Any who's the two after that did not bring me back up to where I was when I first started the album. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily because they're not bad songs. They're just not the quality of like, you know, um, him and I pray for me, beautiful and the damned, all of all the ones that came up on earlier. So I was kind of waiting for like the, that, like, you know, that uptick to hit again, you know, that second win, which it does, but this is just not where it started. Yeah. For me, that starts on like, song like 12 for me but we'll get there so the next song is pick me up featuring anna of the north which that's a long ass name girl um this is the return of the modulated voice which i actually liked i liked on the song i liked the feature that's one thing i also say about this album he had really good features people i didn't know but he chose them and it complimented him and his style and the song in general um it was what else? But one thing, I'm not really sure what the song's about. Maybe Michael know. Do you know what the song's about? I can't say I do. I mean, okay, I was confused. I was like, that's the only gripe with the song. I couldn't figure out what the fuck you were talking about. Because one minute I was thought it was going this way, then it switched, and then I was like, well, I'm lost, but I'm jamming at the same time. So, yeah, Pick Me, Pick Me Up was fine. It was a good song. A little confusing topics-wise. But if you're, like, I always tell Michael there's two people two type of people that listen to music one that listen to the lyrics and one that's like more for the music but they still know the lyrics and that's that's what i think of this song like if you just listen to the song and not try to overthink it you don't enjoy the song what about you what do you think of pick me up i mean i like your little analogy right there because i feel like this is one of the ones where like i wasn't like deeply come you know committed to the lyrics but like i did like the sound of it like you just said and i'm like okay yeah that's kind of where i'm at with that and anna sounded i'm gonna call her Anna. i'm gonna sing the whole fucking name anna sounded good i didn't mind that at all um i do feel like i do owe myself to go through one more time just to make sure that i didn't don't i didn't miss like an actual hidden gem here because you know i I was going through a little bit of fatigue for the first um with the previous three and this one at least was um a little good enough was was good enough for me to like say that it was coming back the album was coming back for me well, okay. not like a, not like I lost it, but like it was coming back in the sense that like you know I wanted those things to like just go back to back amazing because the first the first like six or seven of them they that's kind of what they did so yeah this this this, this was like, um, a good sign of the times that you know good things are on the way. All right, and so this is the uh, actually the only song on well I guess the third song in his album where I'm like he has weak bars is Goddamn. Mm-hmm. This is this is just a nigga song. Like I don't know what to say. There's nothing to this song. There's no like there's no lyricism. It's very repetitive. But it's so repetitive that I'm still bobbing my head to it. Like even though I know it's like just a typical stereotypical 
rap song and the thing about it is that the beat was really good and it's wasted on this song to be honest but yeah this song, the, beat. the beat is really good yeah it's catchy though ain't gonna lie and it's definitely a club song I ain't, I ain't gonna lie about that either but yeah what do you think about goddamn you see i'm surprised because like a lot of the songs that sound like this i'm expecting to like you know here on the radio as like their club bang or radio hit or whatever and it wasn't there which is kind of weird because i i didn't my i like this song more than i like no limit and somehow no, no limit got on the radio but obviously you know cardi b so i can't argue with that and asap and asap of course right so like you like, have said that a hundred times already but the, the features on this were overwhelming overwhelmingly good and that's a good sign but um goddamn i don't know i kind of want to like it and i'm not gonna say i don't like it but um I think I definitely, for Shanique here, I'm going to go back to her analogy, was into this one for the sound. Yeah. Not necessarily the lyrics. But, like, if if, if, I'm, if I wanted to bank on that, that's a good bet. Because, like, that's kind of why I really like the song. Like, I don't actually mind hearing the song again. Like, yeah, yeah maybe the bars weren't that hype. But I feel like, I don't know, I was, I was in this weird place where in the back of my head, I'm like, this nigga is a good rapper. It's just choosing not to be a good rapper right now <laughs> just he decided to make the beat do all the work for him i don't know if he got like fatigue if it's like you know rap, like you know performance fatigue or something like that but it's like you know sure the consistency for for bars in there but the consistency for good beats are definitely there okay cool uh i and i definitely agree i didn't say it was a bad song but you know there was no lyricism at all in that record which is fine okay. all right next song leviathan which i automatically think of final fantasy 15 but it's not the type uh, of song. Um, featuring Sam Martin. First of all, Sam Martin has a very old school voice. And I was listening to him. I was like, oh, I actually like it. I liked how he opened the song. And when he was doing his little thing, then the beat really comes in. And GZ step, GEZ steps in on the record. And I thought that was a really good switch up. And it it made me really like the song. Because GZ, GEZ's, I keep like saying GZ, but he's not GZ. That is a black guy from the South. Mixing up rappers here. Um, He really, like, when he gets, once he starts rapping on his track, he, like, never lets it go. And his flow is really good. Lyrics are really good. Sam, you did your thing. So, yeah, I really love Leviathan. What do you think of it, the track? I do agree with um, you, what you said um about the transition between him and um, Sam. I thought that was pretty good. Their synergy was also there. I'll definitely, um, you know, at this point, I'm definitely up back in hope that, you know, the album is getting another second wind here. And I do like the song a lot. Like, it's definitely a good sound, good pacing for the song. Um, interesting title, Leviathan, because I, 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 I don't know why. I was thinking about Harry Potter for some reason. You know, I know it's not like a Leviathan in there, but it's like, yeah, Harry Potter was where my, where my head was. Weird review for a song here. Moving on. <laughs> Next one, Crash and Burn featuring Kalani. And, mm-hmm. you know, if anyone doesn't know who Kalani is, she sings that song Gangsta from Suicide Squad. Um, she sounds really good on this track. His bars are really good. I love the message of the song, you know. Live each day like it's your last. Even though, in reality, you probably can't really do that. But I do like the idea of just living your life to the fullest. Or until you crash a burn, apparently. Right. <laughs> but it's a fun song. Keani sounds good. And he sounds good. And everything went right with this track. So, yeah. Definitely. Crash and burn all day. What about you? <laughs> crash and burn all day. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of saying is that? <laughs> Anyways. This song was cool. It's nice to see another, um, the, the, the female, you know, uh supports coming back here and it was pretty good kalani um she's usually sometimes a hit or miss for me on like um, her own songs but it's like for right here is is i was I'm, I'm i'm fully convinced that she's one of those performers who's like better as a feature than as, as a solo performer you know it's for like the one time you know suicide squad but that's neither here nor there but other than that, i thought it was pretty good pretty good song here did not mind it at all um i do agree with shanique interesting little message that was going on um, and I feel like this did a, a, a lot of justice by me for this album. Okay. Next song, Summer in December. Interesting uh, title. I know, and I don't particularly understand it, but hey, 
one thing I would say is, um, it's one of the most lyrical songs on the album, which is saying, it's not really saying a lot because a lot of the songs on this album was lyrical, but because he had the beat basically be a piano, you can hear his lyrics more. Mm-hmm. This is like, if you have a very simple beat and a piano, you cannot spit whack bars that kills the song automatically because you can't hide behind anything. So this is basically a song just to listen to, and I love the piano. It's such a very old school thing to do, but I like that he did it. So yeah, definitely, Summer in December was a really good song. It's not my favorite, obviously, but it's it's pretty close. What do you think of it, Michael? Uh, this song was interesting. Um, I immediately saw the title, and I was like, okay, this is a... Something you gotta explain to me, G. Um, G. Z. I'm about to say call him G. Z. Because she's unique now. But yeah, like, I need some explanations here, because hopefully your song, you know, helps me figure out what the hell is going on. Um, it was definitely an interesting song. I did like it. It did sound like um pretty unique. The beat was pretty interesting as well. I did not mind it though. But you know, that's that's the one thing definitely consistent about this album. And um, G. Z. He did a good, pretty good performance here too. Um, uh, I have nothing really to take away from it. To be honest, it's not necessarily the um the stuff I'm looking for from the first half, but it's still good something you know that I found that I came back to in the second half though, so I did not mind. All right, cool. Next one, we two of the next two songs are like on my top three, so we're not gonna go over those. Next one is "Mama Always Told Me" featuring Madison Love. Mm-hmm. Um, very creative beat. I don't know how they made the beat, but it was very creative, and I liked it. Um, his flow was really good. The feature was really good. Um, it was oddly enough like the hip hop version of Rude, cause he was kind of like saying, the girl was like, "Yo, Mama told me to stay away from you," and he's like, "Come here, come on, forget what Mom told you." And I mean, that may work for you in real life, or your mom could end up being right. But I did like the kind of like Romeo and Juliet, Juliet type feel of the song. I thought Madison sound really good. And I thought Jeezy was telling a story. And one thing, for me to consider you a good rapper, you have to be able to tell a story. If you can't tell a story, you automatically suck to me. So that's why like, I have limits on like who I consider actually like good rappers or not. What do you think of Mama Always Told Me? It's weird. Uh, who is it? Lucas Graham? I don't know. I, I think about Lucas Graham when you uh, made the, the song... Um... Mama said, um, I thought that was, I thought that was, that song was pretty good. And I, I felt like it's like the hip hop version of that song. I don't know if anybody out here can relate to that song right here, but it's like, if you, if you, if you ever heard it, it's one of his biggest songs. You might have heard it on the radio here or there next to, he's a singer who made seven years or whatever it is. But, um, I thought that song was cool and I thought that this, um, version of it was <laughs> not version of it, but, um, G-Eazy's version was also interesting because like essentially the same theme there. It's, you know, very mama centric and, you know, it's it has a lot of shades of what's going on with himself going on in there as well. A lot more than the Lucas Graham song, which I keep comparing it to for some reason. But um it was pretty good. I like how Dexany said this decent storytelling in here as well. And I feel like this is one of the other songs in the in the last half that I do feel were first half quality. Okay. Cool. Uh next one. Fly Away featuring Ugauchi. Uh, I don't know how to say that person's name. But yeah, it starts with a U and ends with a C-H-I. But um, at first I thought it was a little boring. You know, it's not the most exciting song. It's just a song to really listen to. I did like the feature. Um, It's it's a decent song, but it's just like... If I had to pick a forgettable song on the album, it would probably be this one. It didn't really leave much of an impression on me. Jeezy wasn't bad. The feature wasn't bad. I just, I don't know. The song just didn't do much for me. Still a good song, though. Just not the most, in my opinion, the most intriguing song on the album. What do you think of it? Fly Away. See, it's weird. Like, I really like Fly Away. <laughs> like, um, I do think it was pretty cool. Um, I don't know who U- Ugoichi is. Um, we're we're going to call him Ugg. Or her. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to call him Ugg. <laughs> yeah. Ugg was pretty good, too. Um... It's one of them things where it's like, you know, one of these unknown, um, you know, supporters and, sorry, support performers on a song get a little moment to shine here and there. And, like, I think they did pretty well for themselves. I did, you know, they maintained the synergy that everyone else had with um, g Easy. 
which is a good thing. I don't know if it's like G is the one like who actually like you know bounces out the synergy here, or if it's actually just like them just having that weird like connection somehow to make things work. I didn't think it was um ever. I don't think it was like boring or forgettable or something like that. I actually pretty much liked it. But um, I don't know. I I could be having a part a partial bias here to be fair for this song, only because I was looking really really hard for something like the first half. And I do, I in in my honest opinion, I do believe that this song did catch me um uh, for you know for pretty good quality, similar to the first half. You know what's weird? I love the second half more than the first half, and you love the first half more than the second half. Yeah, I sure do. I, I don't know why. I just I don't know. I felt like the second half for me was more of the songs I particularly like. But hey, but you also know No Limit and three three of the songs that you weren't particularly fond of is in the first half. Just saying. Yeah. I know, that's fair. <laughs> Alright, and last song we're gonna talk about, since I put easy as my top three, is Love Is Gone. This mm-hmm. is an example of woke G Easy. Where he was talking right. about real issues. And it's Trump featuring and all that. Yep. It's featuring Drew Love. He's talking about the police shooting. He's saying, Oh, how can you expect people to get over it when there's no justice? Um basically the song is like this shit keeps happening because love is missing in mm-hmm. the world and it's a basic call for change telling rappers to step up and all the stuff and I, I really like it I thought it was very good and you like artists who talk about like real issues so I thought definitely if I had to pick another honorable mention Love is Gone would definitely be in there what do you think of it? I thought the shout out to YG was hella cool because remember, it was YG's song that he featured G Easy in, titled "Fuck Donald Trump," and I was like, "Oh, wait a second, we've heard this before, literally live in person." I I was, right, and I'm like, "Oh wow, man, he actually like put that on the uh, on the album." But yeah, it's like Shinnick said though, it's um, it definitely saying, "Yo, love is gone," and that's why literally all the things on the news, um, for what we're hearing is on the news. Like, yo, we just don't know how to treat each other. And he decided to um be very artistic about it and, like, put it out there in his music in a very tasteful way. Like, he's not just that, you know, don't get me wrong. I can see the argument for Fuck Donald Trump being a very distasteful song because all it's really just saying is, you know, I'm angry and you suck, which I don't care. I I, I, don't, I don't care. I'm not going to make this a political podcast here, but I don't care. I like that song. But like, I feel like this this is the the far more tasteful and, like, you know, more well well more versed and articulate version of that song pretty much and i i do like what he did with it it was a great performance by him i wish i could have seen that the same day we saw for donald trump that could have been cool that would have been a very good like icing on the cake right there and i i just feel like he like Shani said it shows a very good side of um g easy here sh- sh- showing his like you know his intellect and like you know his quote-unquote wokeness or whatever I hate using that word because I, I don't know. But yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel like he just carried both of those things pretty well. And I do agree that this is a potential album mention here. Okay, well, looks like we finished the album. Um, so let, I'm going to give my closing remarks. All I got to say is buy the album support the artists this is a really good album and it's a good way to end 2017 and start 2018 and i hope to hear more singles off this album and hopefully more his lyrical singles hell do him and i because it has halsey on it um (laughs) and i think he's gonna be the artist that you should watch in 2018 besides cardi b what do you want to say for your closing remarks if all you've heard was No Limit on the radio like me, and you thought the rest of the album was going to be like that, you're wrong. Pick up the album. It's actually a lot better than that. Worth your money. You know, some people want the album to be like that, though. Well, I'm sorry. To, well, well, to those people, I'm sorry. That's not the album for you, then. If you listen, if you listen to the podcast, you could have already told you that. I don't know how you made it this far into the podcast and not realize I was going to say get the album anyway, but whatever. <laughs> no matter what, whether you want hype g Easy or lyrical or whatever this album has both so i say check it out no matter what all right so guys we want to know what you guys think were we were we tripping was this album trash because funny enough i read i actually saw a a review of russ's album and that album got voted the worst album one of the worst rap albums of 2017 
but I think it had something to do with the person's bias against Russ as a rapper. Not really the album itself, but that's just me. So, like, people disagree with us, so we want to hear what you guys think, whether it's good or bad. Um, tweet us comments or suggestions, like, follow, and you can all do that on Twitter at Echo U Podcast. You can also find us on any social media site, for the most part, besides Instagram. We'll work on that. Hint, hint, Michael. Um, <laughs> and Facebook and iTunes and all podcasting apps at Echo Underground Podcast. And we'll see you guys next episode. Bye. See you.